Okay, so dividing rational expressions is just like multiplying. Does anybody remember what you do when you divide by a fraction? Yeah, we multiply by the opposite, or we call it in math, we call that the reciprocal. Okay, so multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, or the, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not crazy over the word opposite because opposite usually means negative, okay? Uh, change negative and positive. But reciprocal means you flip it over, okay? So, on number 13, before I do anything, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip the second one over and it becomes multiplication. Okay, we only flip the second one over. Okay, we leave the first one the same, we flip the second one over, and we're going to turn it into multiplication. So now, this is just what we were just doing. We multiply straight across the top, so 5 times 8 is 40. Uh, P, that's the only one we've got. Q times Q to the 5th is Q to the 6th. Be careful with your P's and Q's that you can tell the difference there. Okay, 16 times 35... Don't need it right there. 16 times 35 is 560. Ooh, a big one. Okay, P cubed times P squared is P to the fifth. And we've got just Q squared. Now it's time to simplify. Okay, 40 over 560. I do not think that those divide evenly, but I do know that they'll simplify because they both end in zero. I know at least that much. Okay. It does actually divide evenly. 1 over 14. Okay, so we've got 14 in the bottom. P over P to the 5th. 5 minus 1 is 4. It was bigger in the bottom. So we've got P to the 4th in the denominator. Q to the 6th over Q squared. 6 minus 2 is 4. It was bigger in the top. So we've got Q to the 4th in the numerator. And that is our final answer. Okay, number 14. This one has binomials and trinomials in it, but the first step remains the same. I keep the first part the same. It turns into multiplication, and I flip the second rational expression over. Now, if you can flip and factor at the same time, you're going to save yourself some writing. Okay, if you can flip and factor at the same time, you're going to save yourself some writing, but I don't want you to get too ahead of yourself and get confused. So let's just try and do it one step at a time. All right, 10. It's monomial. We don't factor it. We just leave it, okay? Second numerator. We've got x times x gives us x squared. <coughs> 3 times 2 gives us 6. Positive 3 minus 2 is positive 1. Over. In the denominator, 4x minus 8. What do we factor there? 4x minus 8. What do we factor there? Take out a 4, right? x minus 2 is what we're left with. Then 2x squared plus 6x. What do we factor there? 2x. And we're left with x plus 3. Okay, now we get to cancel. The fun part, right? We've got x plus 3 in the top and in the bottom. We've got x minus 2 in the top and in the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and write what we have now, but we're not finished. Okay, because we've got 10 in the numerator, and we've got 4 times 2x in the denominator. So that's 8x. Will 10 over 8 simplify? Yes, because they're both divisible by 2. So 5 over 4x is what this one boils down to. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Alrighty, let's see here. Let's look at this problem because I think I see a little issue that second numerator right now is not in standard form. Let's fix that before we start flipping and factoring. 
Okay, the second numerator was not in standard form. The a cubed came second when it should come before the a squared. So I just changed the order there. Now I'm going to flip and uh, multiply. Okay, so keep the first one exactly the way it is. Turns into multiplication, and the second one flips over. All right, now it's time to factor. Okay, so first numerator. What we got? What should we do? What do they have in common? Mm-hmm. And anybody? A squared. Okay, be careful. Two A squared because we've got A cubed and A squared. So they both have at least an A squared. So when we take out the two and we take out an A squared, we're left with an A and a minus six. Okay, second numerator, three terms. So we jump to. Well, there's no GCF, so we set up two sets of parentheses. A times A is A squared. 5 times 3 is 15. Negative 5 and negative 3 give us negative 8. All over denominator. First denominator, no GCF, right? So two sets of parentheses. A times A is A squared. 6 times 2 is 12. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. How about that second denominator? What do we do when the first number is negative? We got to take out the negative. Okay, what is in common with 8 and 24? 8. Okay, so we've got times negative 8, and do we need anything with the variable? A squared. a squared. Thank you. Okay, so we're left with A minus 3. Thank you. All righty. So what do we get to factor, or not factor? We've already factored. What do we get to cancel here? Lovely. What else? A minus 3, what else? A squared. A squared, very good. We got that in the top and the bottom. And there's one more thing we can simplify. 2 over the 8, right? <clears throat> so let's see here. 2 over negative 8 leaves us with negative 4 in the bottom. So we've got A minus 5 in the top. I'm going to leave my parentheses around it because I have a negative number in the bottom. I've got a negative 4 and a plus 2 there in the bottom. So I'm going to leave my parentheses because that negative, we don't like to leave that in the denominator. We want to move that negative up to the numerator okay, and distribute it. So it's negative a plus 5 over 4 times a plus 2. Okay. Now, let's do one more together. And then I'm going to let y'all practice with this for a minute. Now, that last one's got a lot going on here. Okay, it's got a lot going on. We've got an expression divided by another expression times another expression. So, let's kind of break down the pieces right here. Don't get intimidated by the length of this problem. Uh, now, we're used to things having numerators and denominators, right? And that one in the middle doesn't have a denominator. So, let's make it have one. Put it over one, okay? Dividing by one doesn't do anything to it but it does make it look like all the other ones. And the reason why I did that was because 
That one comes directly after a division symbol. So we've got to flip that and turn it into multiplication. Okay, so we're going to multiply by 1 over 4K plus 1. Now the last one comes after multiplication, so we don't change it. Okay, you do not change it because it's right after a multiplication symbol, so you leave it the way it is. Okay, so let's see what we can what we can and cannot factor. K plus 3, no factoring to be done there, so I'm just going to put it in a set of parentheses. I really don't need that 1, okay? That 1, multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, so we're just going to leave it out. 16K squared minus 1. What do we call that? Difference of perfect squares. 16 and 1 are perfect squares, and we're subtracting. So, 4K times 4K gives me 16K squared. 1 times 1 gives me 1. One of them's got to have a plus. One of them's got to have a minus. Okay, in the denominator... There's nothing to be factored. We just need to put parentheses around those expressions that are there. So K times 4K plus 1 times K plus 3. Now we get to cancel. We got K plus 3. We got 4K plus 1. And that's it. Okay, we've got 4K minus 1 left in the numerator and a K left in the denominator. And that is as far as we can go with that. Okay, we cannot cancel those Ks because this one, the one on the top, is attached to the 4 and the minus 1. Okay, this one is not like, oh, um, we have one minute ago. Well, it's, it's not like simplifying the 10 over 8 here. Okay, we can simplify the 10 over, the eight, 10 over 8 because there are no pluses and minuses right here. There's a minus right here. We can't simplify anything else unless it's exactly the same thing. Okay?